Hello, biology students. Um, I'm just going to do a quick little lesson on um, some of the biological molecules. And I think with all three sections of biology, I do think that I got through carbohydrates. And we talked a little about those, um, you know, the sources of, of car carbohydrates in our diets, uh, like the pasta, the bread, the cereal, potatoes, anything with sugar in. Um, we talked a little bit about how not all carbohydrates are created equal um, and that some of them are a little healthier than others. Um, a little bit about the, the structure. So remember monomers are that base unit that makes up larger molecules. And for each of the four biological molecules that we're going to talk about, each of them has a monomer. Um, and for carbohydrates, monomers are monosaccharides like glucose um, but also some other there are some other monomers as well um, a disaccharide di means two so a disaccharide is just two of those monomers um, we talked about how um, sucrose which is table sugar is actually um, two different monosaccharides and then polysaccharides are much larger carbohydrates things like um, starches. Any kind of starch is going to be a polysaccharide. When you're here on Wednesday, we're actually going to work a little bit with some starches and proteins. Um, do a little experiment with that on Wednesday and Friday. So as I go through this, and again, I think we already talked about carbohydrates in all three sections of biology, but as I go through this, I do want you to write these down in your notes. Uh, in your handy dandy notebook, remember that we um, we get points for our notes, so we want to make sure that we have complete notes. And since I'm doing this on video, you can pause it as many times as you need to. All right, so let's talk about lipids. I think sometimes lipids get a little bit of a bad rap. Um, lipids are those fats um, and oils. So fats are solids, oils are liquid. That's how we differentiate them, but they're both lipids. We have lipids in our bodies and obviously we eat lipids as well in our diet. Um, and there's been a lot of, I think, discussion and change about how how many or how much, what quantity of lipids um, is healthy and how much we should eat. Um, and a lot of that maybe depends on what you're eating with that and also how active you are. Um, so this is the most highly concentrated source of energy of any of the food that you can eat. Fat has the most calories, if you will. So we measure energy as calories, and we know fats have the highest number of calories. So if I have a cube of a carbohydrate, let's say that I have a one centimeter cube of carbohydrate, um, that has about, that has about, I don't know why I wrote that, that has about 20 calories in that one uh, centimeter cube. Whereas if I have, so if I have the same size cube of a lipid, it is going to have 40 calories. So this is my carbohydrate, this is my lipid. So if you are starving to death out in the wilderness and it's wintertime in Minnesota and you only have, you know, uh, four ounces of food that you can take with you and it's going to be a long, cold night, you probably want to take lipids with you because it is the most concentrated source of, of, of calories, okay? And I think back when people worked more in the outdoors, I know some people still do actually, my, my family are, my parents are farmers, so I know that they still work outside. They, they need to eat a little more fat in their diet probably than I do, right? All right, types of lipids. Um, the And I think for a long time, lipids did get a bad rap and we're kind of changing that. We're realizing, you know, some, some fats are healthier like olive oil and olives, um, even though they're high in fats, are that healthier kind of fat. So there's different kinds of, of lipids. Triglycerides, the most common kind of fat found in meats, um, nuts, and seeds. And we, olives, butter, cheese, um, and then 
they may be saturated or unsaturated. Unsaturated tend to be healthier than saturated. All the saturated means is that um, it's saturated with, with hydrogen atoms and you don't need to know that. Um, phospholipids are a really important lipid because these are actually found in cell membranes. Um, so the cell membranes are actually made of a lipid and that's kind of how they stay together in your body remember that the cell membrane isn't this like you know um like baggy if you will it really is it really is a a lipid and it's oily and part of it is hydrophobic meaning it repels water so it wants to stay together almost like if you drop a little droplet of oil in water how that kind of stays together because it doesn't mix well with water in our bodies Steroids are another um, type of lipid that is really important. Again, I think steroids, we think a lot of negative things when we hear the term steroid, but steroids are really important in our bodies. Um, we do need steroids. Um, it is important in, in our body's function. They serve as, as messengers in our bodies. Um, they're important and contribute to the production of hormones, which are very important in how our bodies function and develop. Um, so those steroids are really important. Kind of the, the steroids that we tend to think of are anabolic steroids and, and athletes kind of taking those steroids to make them, um, you know, stronger or faster um, and um, grow bigger muscles and so forth. But um, there's a lot of, some of you maybe have had medical treatments where you've used steroids. Um, I've taken steroids to help me get rid of poison ivy. Um, and I've taken steroids to help heal. Um, I had a, a, an injury in my eye and they want that to heal, heal very quickly. So they gave me drops that had steroids in because they don't, they don't want me to, they didn't want me to um, have the injury for a long time and the potential of infection. So they wanted it to heal, heal really quickly. Um, so they use steroids for that. But in our bodies, they exist naturally and they're very important. And they're a type of lipid that's really important. All right, and you may notice that the next thing in the notes that I've posted is actually proteins, but um, the order that Apex goes in talks about nucleic acids next. So I kind of want to, I'm going to jump to um, nucleic acids and talk just briefly about this. So when we talk about nucleic acids, we're talking about all this genetic material, um, the DNA and the RNA. I'm not gonna talk about it in very much detail here because we spend an entire chapter learning about DNA and you build a little model of DNA a little bit later in the year. Um, so I just, I, at this point, I think we just wanna know that um, nucleic acids are one of those four biological molecules that we find in living things. Um, and it really, it's either DNA or it's RNA. There's really nothing else that is a nucleic acid in any living thing. It only is DNA, which we know is that genetic material in all of our cells, and then RNA, which is also our genetic material. The big thing to remember is that DNA stays in the nucleus. So, in, so your DNA carries the code to make all the proteins in your body, but if it never leaves the nucleus, and when we learn about cells, you're gonna find out that actually proteins, which the DNA codes for, aren't made in the nucleus. So how did that code get out of the nucleus? And that's actually where the RNA comes into play. It literally, DNA copies its code onto RNA, and then it takes that, carries that code, it's the little messenger, carries the code out to the ribosomes, and that's actually where the RNA is like, hey, I'm bringing the code, uh, we're ready to make proteins, we're gonna assemble some amino acids to make some proteins. We'll talk more about amino acids when we talk about proteins in the next part. Um, but for now, um, we just need to know nucleic acids are all about genetic material. All of the living things that exist in our, in our world all have DNA um, and RNA or RNA and they reverse into DNA and so forth. But they, they, have, they, they, um, they carry DNA and RNA and there's not any other genetic material. So that's the same for every living thing, whether it's a bacteria or a plant or an animal. Um, it's, it's, it's pretty amazing, actually, the commonalities in all living things and all life. 
the monomer of nucleic acids, both DNA and RNA, is something called a nucleotide. And this is a representation of a nucleotide. And again, we'll talk about this in a lot more detail later as well. But we just we just want to know. Um, so there's a there's a sugar, a five carbon sugar. That's why it's a five five points on this little pentagram. Each little point represents a carbon. There's a carbon. Here's a carbon. Sorry, I'm writing with my mouse, so I know it's super messy. Um, and then a phosphate. The phosphate is represented by this orange circle. So this is really simple. And then a nitrogenous base. There's four different nitrogenous bases in, in DNA, um, and there's one different one in RNA. But the DNA, when we talk about the base, um, the four are guanine, cytosine, Thymine and adenine. So those are the four nitrogen bases um, that each monomer has a phosphate, a sugar, and one of those nitrogen bases. And it's actually the nucleotide unit that is floating around that's that's um, that assembles when it's making more DNA or making RNA, if it's making a copy of itself and so forth. And that's really it for um, nucleic acids. So I will, after I post this video for you, I will make a Google form for you to complete that's just going to ask you a few questions that are contained in the notes that I just gave you with this. Um, and so please go in, answer that Google form, make sure that you turn it in completely. Um, and then that's going to be the way that I take attendance for today. So watch for something maybe similar tomorrow um, as well. So I'll have a Google form for you probably every day that you're home. Good luck. I miss you. Can't wait for you to come in on Wednesday so we can do some labs together.